Hello guys, this is uh, link 9 us here, ready to provide you with one of my commentary playthroughs. This is going to be on the video game Sugaden for the PlayStation. Now before I begin, there are a few things to note that I think are of importance before diving into my playthroughs. And I am new to this, so bear with me. I'm a video game completionist, always have been, and that's never going to change. So my sole purpose in this guide, and all of my guides for that matter, is to create a 100% perfect guide that walks you through every entire aspect of the game. Gathering every item, leaving no stone unturned, and providing, to my knowledge, the best strategy that will help not only defeat the game, but master it. Uh, during portions when I, where I level grind characters, I will not be recording those segments, because if I did, this guy would be much too long, and I, of course, boring. You don't, you want, you don't want to see one video just dedicated to level grinding. So instead, I am going to mention when I level grind in my guide, and then show exactly what changed from that moment on. Such as, you know, what items I received, currency, levels, skills, etc. So you're not lost. <clears throat> this is actually a very new experience to me. I have never actually done commentary walkers before. So I'm very new to it. I, 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 I chatted to a few people online that have been giving me some pretty good sage advice. Um, so I'm taking their, you know, skills in hand and I'm trying to utilize it. So don't expect a professional commentary, but as I do more guys and walkers, I will improve my skills in commentating. This is a very extensive project, so please be patient as I release more videos. I will work as much as I can and in time as I further improve my skills, I might just be able to pump out these walkers more quickly. I do hope you enjoy this playthrough of Sukaden. Now, speaking in terms of the video game itself, this is actually a more complicated role-playing game due to the fact that there are many things that you can miss in the game if you're not careful. For any fans of the Sukunin franchise, you know what the 108 destinies are referred to as. For those of you who don't know, it's basically different characters in the game, and Sukunin has an overwhelming amount of characters you can recruit, much like, you know, Chrono Cross. That is what makes this game kind of unique to other RPGs. My guide will focus on recruiting all 108 stars of destiny. I will try my very best to provide a commentary that is both entertaining and educational. I will refrain from making fun of certain characters and just talking about nonsense. My commentaries are going to focus on the internal aspects of the game itself. In short, my playthroughs are going to be a lot more serious in nature as opposed to me just rambling on about things that are irrelevant. One more thing to note before we get started is you will come across major war-like battles. These are very important to notice. Make sure you absolutely do not die during these battles. If you do, reset your game and keep trying until you're able to finish them. If you die during just one of these war battles, you will miss your chance of acquiring all of the 108 Stars of Destiny, which are the characters in the game. Just thought I'd point that out if you're willing, going for a perfect playthrough. Of course, I will bring these up later in my guide during the appropriate times, so not to worry. And I think that is about all I have to say, so without further ado, let's get this show on the road. I'll be talking about naming character next, once this cutscene finishes. Alright, here we go. So now we're going to just press start and go to new game. And just like most RPGs, you have to first name your characters. Now usually they give you a default name, but in this case they do not. I usually like to always stick to the default name, but you can choose whatever you wish. According to uh, SukiSource.com and other resources, the main character's real name is actually Tyr McDowell. So I just named him Tyr. So his full name will be Tyr McDowell in the game. Uh, 
Uh, another thing to note in this game, you must visit every item shop and weapon shop to look at all the wares each NPC is holding. If you do not, you won't be able to have access to all the items later on when you get your castle. This is pretty important in the beginning here at Gregan Master, so keep that in mind. And here we go. I was kind of I apologize for a kind of a long introduction, but uh, I just wanted to get you know a couple things. Just want to explain a few things. Now you may notice when looking at my videos, particularly RPG games, that I talk to all the NPCs in every given town or village. If you just want to skip certain parts of my guide to get to the meat of the walkthrough, then by all means do so. I'm actually just, you know, going around speaking to everyone in the castle before talking to my father. Now this guy Craze will actually play an important part in the story very soon. And he's also a stick in the mud, you'll find out soon. Now you see these two statues here, if you talk to the statue on the right, you can get yourself 100 bits. And for those of you who don't know, that's the currency in this game. You can actually get this in the castle whenever, but I chose to get them right away. You know, during this part. I like the music in this part of the game. It's kind of an upbeat tune. Okay, now it's uh, time to go talk to your father. Tio, Tio is the, your father. Master Tio, Master Tio, the Emperor will receive you now. Please come this way. And now it's this is where you actually go get an audience with the Emperor. Barbarossa. War of Succession is actually a vital point in the game. It'll take place. 
uh, much later. Why can't they just send me? <laughs> Of course they give your father the sword and you don't end up with crap. Because, <laughs> you know, you're the main character and you're uh, not qualified or anything for any uh, missions. You're an apprentice. Now you will actually get quite a lot of options like this one. Here you just want to select the first one. And you know, it's important to note some of these options because they can have various effects on how you recruit some of the characters in the game and unlocking certain dialogue sequences that would, you know, otherwise be impossible if you don't select the correct options. So keep that in mind. It's pretty important. Let's go. Now, after the audience with the Emperor is over, you're actually supposed to go talk to Craze right now. But I just wanted to talk to a few extra NPCs, you know, just because they say different things. But you don't have to actually do that. You're not really missing anything, really. This is how I always am with uh, role playing games. After every major event, I always speak to every NPC. You know, you'll be surprised what you can, what what different uh, tidbits of information you can actually acquire huh, sometimes. Your name, Terror. I couldn't care less if you're a son of a great general. You'll get no special treatment here, understand? Now go on home. Work begins tomorrow. Report here first thing in the morning. Boy, what a strict bastard. Now after you speak to Craze, you are actually automatically escorted to your house. There's nothing you can do. You can't speak to anybody outside of town or anything you're just automatically escorted right to your house You can actually talk to all these people later. And this is where you meet Gremia. As soon as Gremia goes to check on his stew and Teal leaves you, this is a very critical part in the game. You stop what you're doing, do not progress any further. At this point in the game, it is actually possible to get your hands on two runes early in the game. And also get some extra levels in, which will dramatically increase 
your uh, levels, give you a boost early in the game. Otherwise, you will have to get them later, and they're, you know, a little bit more rare to acquire. Now, I want to actually speak about these two runes. So, um, the two runes you can acquire are called the Prosperity Rune, which enables you to acquire more money after each battle, and the Fortune Rune, which enables you to acquire more EXP. These are indefinitely handy during the early stages of the game. To get the Fortune Rune, just leave the house by yourself. And to get the Prosperity Rune, make sure to talk to Ted upstairs and let him join your party only. Just him, nobody else. Then leave your house. You could choose whichever, but I thought, you know, currently, I thought currency was more valuable due to the fact that EXP is variable by level. Now just go to the inn and save your game like I'm doing here. And then leave town. Don't worry about talking to anyone here yet. We are going to take some major detours through some areas that you will not be exploring until later in the story. The reason for this is because you want one of those two runes before you progress any further into the story. Now you may notice that I'm just actually leaving town without speaking to Ted because I want to gain a few levels by myself firsthand before recruiting Ted. And as you know, as a solo player right now, you can actually, um, you know, you can get a lot more EXP. So, so uh, I think that's about all I have really to say. My, my next video is going to focus on just that: acquiring this room, leveling up a bit, exploring some new areas getting your character pretty strong so the next few sections of the game are going to be much easier. So with that, I hope you enjoyed my commentary. This is Link9US and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.